Good evening everybody and once again welcome to the video. This is a video tutorial number 7 in continuation with my AWS step function playlist or series. In this video I'll be showing you how to parallel process document using a map operator and essentially during that parallel processing if any of the documents failed how do we dump all the data to a dead letter queue. This video will focus essentially on DLQ and step function and a map state. Let's get started with the video. All right, what we are about to build in this tutorial is something like this. So essentially we'll be passing uh, items or array of objects. As you can see over here, shift, right? So we have all these objects which we want to process in parallel. So how do we develop the step steps, uh, you know, AWS step functions for that, okay? So uh, we'll go with the YML or the JSON first, right? So uh, the first thing that we have is comment where we define what is the state function doing start at so essentially you know uh, where do you want a state machine to start right so i'm essentially calling a name called for loop this can be anything right uh, after you make a request you have array of documents that you want to process so after that i define a type as a map operator and here i'm saying uh, if i try to try my best to copy paste uh, this in a notepad so it's much more easier for you to show so if i go back and if i come here now if you see uh, input path is dollar dot input dollar means hey the outer JSON then he says dot details so we come to this particular array right items path is dollar dot shift so after that we say dollar then dot shift so we can access this item inside the array right so that's the path item path max concurrency how many lambda do you want to fire in parallel right I'm saying I want to fire two lambdas okay we have an iterator object Okay, so now we'll go with the iterator object. Now here I'm defining a state called process JSON file. This could be anything, right? Any other task, right? So inside the iterator, when the data comes, I want to define a state called process JSON file. Now here is where I'm defining that state. I'm saying type as task, resource as a Lambda function, right? I'll show you the Lambda code in a second. So please wait for that. And over here, I define a catch block. Now here I'm saying that, hey, if my error equals to task dot failed, right? If any of the task failed, kindly go and publish the message to the SQS. And the, there is a reason why I have used the word result path as null. The reason I have used the result path as none is because I want the previous input to act as an output to the next state. So what I'm trying to say or convey to you is this is the state, right? So the input would be a JSON document, right? A JSON document. Now, if it fails, it goes to this state, right? So here becomes my output, right? So I'm saying I want to, since I want to publish this message to the SQS, I'm defining result path as null here. And this says that carry forward the previous input to the next state. This is essentially described on their documentation. So here I'm saying that the same thing. If states dot all fail, then, you know, publish the event to a dead letter queue. So that's essentially that. So I define the catch block. Then I said end as true. Every state needs to have two things, end or next item, okay? So I'm collapsing that. Now, coming back to my AWS management console, I have an SQS queue or a DLQ you wanna call. You wanna copy the queue URL. Now here is how you would publish an item to an SQS. So you define the state called publish failed event to dead letter queue, right? Now you will say type as task resource arn.aws.state.sqs.send message because we want to send a message. Now the SQS takes a parameter, right? So you provide the queue URL and the message body is dollar, which means whatever you get from the previous state, pass that to the dead letter queue, okay? So that's that. Now collapsing this, uh, I want to show you how this looks like uh, in, a, in a second or two, so. Oh, this is my dead letter queue, so I don't want to do. So let me first purge all I purge all the item in the queue so that I can assure you that there is nothing and I can show you the demo after that. We click on purge and sure enough, that's done. Coming back to my step function here, click on edit state machine and we'll copy paste this inside there here. We'll click on format JSON and as you can see, my state machine looks like this. Click on save. Now let's take a look at the Lambda function that is gonna do the job. 
here is my lambda function it's a very easy all i am simulating is i'm adding a timestamp attribute to everyone so if you see my json here all these json doesn't have a time timestamp attribute right so the lambda i'm simulating an event where the lambda is trying to process and it failed so what should happen is ideally for every failed document this document should go to dead letter because i tried to process in parallel and it did not process so i should go to a dead letter queue so that's that now i will show you in a second the lambda code clicking here on the management console okay so the hello and i'll just assure you that you know uh, the same code is there here as well i'll remove the error handling for now i mean there is a purposely i have raised raising an exception here so i'm gonna remove this and deploy so as you can see it's adding a timestamp so the first scenario that i'm simulating is everything worked fine okay so now come to the json formatter okay coming to the step function providing my input right so now start execution so now see it's on the process file right so now here you can see my step input was an individual item and two items are being processed at the same time and my output of course my lambda is processing but now i have a output operator as well as you can see these are all my inputs and these are all my output as you can see timestamp is added which means lambda did process that right so you can see that and then if you want you can click on this button which will help you to go across individual states right so i can click here i guess he was here so this is to the end and but yeah this helps essentially to debug uh, yeah any state succeeded you could do all that that's good but now what i purposely want to show you is um, as you can see there are no messages in the dead letter right so now creating a scenario that my lambda function failed to process so i'm purposely raising an exception here okay so i'll simulate the same event so these are one two three four and five right so five uh, essentially documents are being processed and I, I expect five documents to a dead letter so now remember it's trying to process right the lambda is trying to process and it's going to simulate an event that the lambda essentially failed you could define your retrieve logic now you can see an orange symbol which says caught an error so we essentially caught the error and successfully the input was the whatever input we got to the json file and the output is essentially whatever we define right so we got a message id which means the message was published to an sqs queue so coming back here and i see five messages in my dead letter remember these messages can be in the dead letter of queue for up to 14 days uh, that is what the maximum retention period for an um, for an, for an item i can pull for messages and i can see uh, these are my messages right 887 prod 840 so work grids right now another very amazing strategy we, we, we want to follow is whenever item goes to a dead letter we want to maintain a day lake so now you want to say something like you want to have a top level folder name then you want to have a partition here and then your record could be uuid.json now on s3 when you do that you could have an individual json item so you can say status if the status fail you could have that then you can say uh, after you do that uh, the next important item that you can add is the actual data uh, let me think hold on so yeah that's that right now let me just see data what we had here yeah so we could essentially uh, put that all the items in a flattened keys right so essentially this will become whatever the data keys are right so that's that then another thing would be a timestamp right now what happens is uh, of course the data attribute as well so now what will happen is you know when you run your jobs and if anything failed you will have all this item on the on the lake right so now essentially you can run glue crawler on that right and then you can query your lake using, using athena and say hey give me all the jobs that has succeeded in the year this in the month this follow so now you know what data was that did it fail did it pass you can develop metadata or meta essential information of your, about your step function so the idea is to save your metadata uh, essentially right now another beautiful thing uh, you could do is remember if you need an ability to get alerts right through um, step functions right 
when a particular event fails, you could, since it's going to the SQS, you could publish an SMS and have email subscriber. So now you get alerts, hey, this document failed, this failed. So you could do all these beautiful orchestration with step function. I hope you have really enjoyed this. I'll leave the source code and essentially the Python file in the description. So hope you can check that out and try yourself, okay? With that being said, thank you very much for watching. I would, I hope you have enjoyed this small sessions on step function. And by the way, if you have any more question, let me know. I have an entire playlist on step function. I'll leave all the links in the descriptions. If you want, you can check the previous videos out. Thank you so much. And I'll see you guys in the next video.